Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective. So we have an interesting setup here. My man Matthew's with me. As many of you know, he's a radio, television, and film student at the University of Texas. So we've got some, we have a makeshift lab here, uh, studio, if you will, to work with. So very proud of Matthew and, and putting together a quality product uh, for all the Fanatic Perspective fans out there. So guys, um, we, as we know, it's been a tough week. It's been a long week. Uh, you know, Matthew and I were talking about the Kobe news and, and, and everything, and uh, Vanessa Bryant just made her statement. So if you guys hadn't checked out my video regarding just my personal thoughts on Kobe and, and how we're dealing with the tragedy, please check that out. I'll have a link below as well. Uh, and, and so as we move forward, um, there's some Texas updates I want to go through today. And uh, if that's cool with you guys, we'll get started here. But before we get started, I'd be remiss if we didn't give a shout out to our sponsors, Bosses Ranch. Guys, they're celebrating their one year anniversary being on the shelves at HEB. This is very important because you can find them exclusively at HEB in the cold produce section. Guys, it's the best darn ranch in Texas. If you don't believe me, it's actually on the bottle. So um, in all seriousness, I'm very, very proud of Bosses Ranch and um, you know the growth that they've had and it's you know because of folks out there purchasing the product enjoying the product so super bowl sunday coming up no better product to you know uh compliment your 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 trays your wings whatever than boss's ranch uh so a slew of things i want to uh run through here regarding texas football uh this past weekend we had the senior bowl we had two players uh, leave, departing Texas, Colin Johnson, Devin Duvernay, so two of our stud wide receivers who were participating this week. I thought they both had a very good week from all the reports and uh, some of the film I watched. I retweeted a couple of Collins' videos. Uh, Devin Duvernay had some nice plays in the game. One was a third and long catch from Jalen Hurts, which is funny. Um, and, and, you know, just super proud of those guys representing our program you know, and, and it will help with recruiting the productivity that they have, hopefully on Sundays moving forward. And um, it's a this is probably the deepest wide receiver class I've ever seen uh, regarding from a collegiate standpoint. Now, a lot of people talking about 2014, uh, just like Odell and Michael Th or not Michael Thomas, um, Odell, Sammy Watkins um, and, and a few other guys. I'm probably I'm forgetting off the top of my head, but. I mean, this group right now, um, it's insane. I mean, you could have potentially five or six wide receivers go in the first round. Um, and, 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 you know, especially with T. Higgins entering the draft. So uh, Colin and Devin, we know how Devin's going to run. The, the, the thing with Devin is he's going to have to show uh, the fluidity in his hips. He's going to have to improve that and show some quickness and separation, especially with the underneath routes. We know what Devin – he can do with his hands. We know what Devin can do after the catch. And we know how well Devin can track the football in the air. All strengths. And he's clutch. Um, but the fluidity, um, you know, I thought at his time in Texas, the one thing he did struggle with was kick return. Um, can he show that he can add value there as well? Um, that was something that, you know, we often compared him at his time to Texas because he also wore the same jersey. Quan Cosby. Quan Cosby actually made his living in the NFL as a return man. Um, I think Devin has a lot more upside than that, but you know, he's going to have to, to show some of those, the, 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 that short area of quickness, if you will. Now, Colin Johnson, it's really a health thing for me because you guys saw, you know, obviously his hamstring looked good this week because he was breaking people off left and right. Uh, the physical ability is there before the season. Many people had him as their wide receiver, one of the senior class. Uh, but, you know, with with the disappointment with the injuries, you know, he's trying to bounce back now. I thought he did make some money this week for himself. And so hopefully he'll run well. I think him running uh, in Indianapolis is going to be very important, but also his workouts uh, and one on ones against the really good corners. Um, he gave some really good corners at the senior bowl this week in Mobile uh, a whole lot of work. So if we can, can see that progression, continue to see that progression from Colin. It'll be very encouraging for both him and Devin and, and where they go in the draft. But best of luck to both those young men. I just wanted to start off um, just recognizing their efforts uh, at the Senior Bowl. Now, we recently got some news, I believe today, Jawan Mitchell uh, has decided to enter the transfer portal. Uh, for those who haven't heard, 
and uh, he was one of our inside linebackers, uh, somebody who started a handful of games for us this year. And, um, you know, a position that we already lack a lot of depth, uh, it gets worse. So the writing was kind of on the wall, at least for me, from what I saw towards the end of the season. It was, it was crazy because I thought it really came on the middle of the season, and we were excited about some of the things we were seeing him, specifically as a blitzer. Um, he was a guy who would blow up the A-gap, and he actually had three sacks this year and, and, and some more QB pressures. But, you know, the off-the-field stuff in terms of from what we from what has been rumored, not confirmed, but, um, you know, some disagreements, potentially physical with uh, our strength and conditioning coach, Yancey McKnight. And, um, you know, that subsequently led to him um, – having a reduction in snaps i believe the next game they played they allegedly said he couldn't dress because of a hamstring issue uh and then he does play in the utah bowl game but doesn't start um you know court j quiz plays in his starts in his place and um you know the writing's on the wall like i said before and he's gone so what does this position look like now i mean a year ago, we were so excited to see DeGabriel Floyd. Uh, we had not just Juwan Mitchell come in as a Juco transfer, but Caleb Johnson came in. All three of those guys are no longer playing football for Texas. Now, DeGabriel Floyd's situation is totally different. That's completely out of anyone's control. And, um, you know, I'm encouraged to see the brother seeing it on social media and doing his thing. And hopefully he can find another path to, to channel his gifts and, um, You know, it just still breaks my heart that he won't be able to play football, but I at least sleep well at night knowing that he won't do any further damage and and put himself and his body at risk. Now, the other two gentlemen, Caleb Johnson, I believe, is enrolled at UCLA, and obviously Juwan Mitchell has entered the portal. What does that leave us? That leaves us with Adeli, who who just had foot surgery or will have foot surgery, and he won't be back until fall camp. That leaves us with... I believe the healthy body is probably uh, David Benda, who has who's played like one game at linebacker last year. The only time I saw him was in the Kansas game. Uh, Marcus Tillman Jr., who we all liked, was kind of one of the unsung heroes and um, really shown his worth on special teams. He's coming off a torn ACL. Uh, and and I mentioned Court uh, J. Quiz and then Jalen Ford's coming in, but we won't have him most likely, I believe, until summer as well. Um, And then the other person is Joseph Osai. Now, I'll get to Joseph Osai in a second, but you have essentially David Benda as your one true scholarship linebacker in the spring, which is not good uh, from an inside perspective. It's it's not good at all. (laughs) And, and, and you know, God bless the the guys that are walk-ons and whatnot, but at at the University of Texas, that's, that's tough sledding especially when you're installing a new defense. Now, what are our options? Now, uh, from a safety perspective, you got to look at Overshone, Tyler Owens, and potentially B.J. Foster. I, I personally would still like to see B.J. playing safety uh, as we move Stearns over to where Jones was playing and have B.J. kind of as more of a strong safety, Kane Stearns more of a free safety. I want him and Overshone on the field at the same time. Now, uh, from an outside linebacker perspective, I think we're, you know, I would like to see Overshawn move down. Uh, and, and I mentioned Joseph Osai before. We all want to see Joseph Osai in a, in a uh, featured pass rushing role. No doubt about it. He was the MVP of the bowl game when he was unleashed, right? Able to go and, and his greatest gift, he's a very talented player at all three levels of, the, of football, rushing the passer, stopping the run, and defending the pass. Unfortunately, you know, we have depth issues and they, this staff, I'm telling you right now, they may look at moving Joseph Osai back inside or doing something interesting with him because just out of sheer need, especially if, you know, the safety things is, isn't able to work out because if somebody gets hurt now, this is all before we hit up the portal, right? Or look at Juco options. But um, even just looking at the portal right now, I believe there's a brother from LSU that's transferring. Um, and a couple other names 
uh, in there, but nobody that I've I've actually studied or, or done any homework on. And so I don't know if there's any names from some Juco folks that are out there. Like I said, this channel, I learn from you guys as much as you uh, listen to me. So feel free to put in any names in the comments of anybody I need to study up on. Um, now, with that being said, I do look at what Clemson did with an Isaiah Simmons. Now, that's what great looks like. That's the ideal situation where you have a guy that I just mentioned defending at all three levels. There was nobody in the country better than Isaiah Simmons at that. He's going to make a lot of money in a few months because of that skill set. And he's somebody who was, I believe, like 6'4", 230. Ideally, you look at somebody with the skill set of Overshawn, how well he played uh, at times during the season, playing very close to the line of scrimmage. And instinctively, he has some of those gifts that Isaiah has. Um, I, you know, now that's tough ask to, to ask somebody to play like the Buckus winner, right? But uh, he has those physical abilities, uh, speed, athleticism, and that ranginess. That's probably my ideal candidate to move down. Now, Tyler Owens played a lot on special teams, um, and obviously he's the track guy, right? Uh, instinctively, we got to see it from him this spring, and, and that, that's this is going to be uh, when you look at uh, Coach Col- Coleman Hutzler and and Chris Ash. This is their first big test as a staff, and as what Tom Herman talked about regarding player development. How do we get? You know, you don't have an ideal situation here. If you want to blame Todd Orlando, fine. If you want to blame uh, Yancey McKnight again for injuries. I hear you, um, but it's their job, Chris Ash, Coma Hustler, to figure these things out and to get these guys in position uh, to be the best group as possible because uh, there's a sense of urgency here. We don't have time. We don't have time for excuses, and the D-line should be really, really good next year, and the back end, safeties and corners, I've been told we're going to this move with Chris Ash, Jay Valai, all these guys, they're going to coach them up. All right, let's see it, right? So... Um, we need some of these guys to get coached up quickly uh, to fill in those positions. Now, I haven't lost hope in, in David Benda. I know I didn't really talk about him, uh, but he was a highly regarded recruit. He just wasn't ready to play last year, um, and that's okay. Not everybody's ready to play um, you know, college football right off the jump freshman year. doesn't mean they should be disregarded. He was an All-American, high school All-American for a reason and uh, has a ton of potential to fill, fulfill that inside linebacker spot, as well as Delhi when he comes back and, and gets acclimated to the new defense. Uh, but ideally, I like to see Overshawn move down, and we have some combination of Delhi, uh, David Benda, and potentially Tyler Owens there in the mix. And don't count out uh, my man Court, who had a great bowl game. And within that triangle of the of the of the four three under with your defensive tackles and your middle linebacker you can do some things to protect him because he's very very good coming forward and stopping the run and that's what you want any from your middle linebacker in this defense and you want to have that speed on the outside to cover up all the outside zone and everything that's filtering out bubble screens things of that sort right so um hopefully we can get this thing situated and it's not as bad as it seems come spring ball what, and, and that, like I said before, that's going to be our first test with this coaching staff. Now, I want to transition uh, into recruiting. And uh, a lot of, you know, 24-7 came out with their final stars. And uh, some of them is my eye. I don't know why. It's like my eyes just like screwing up or whatever. But we're going to keep the show going. Mama mentality. Um, the 24-7 brought, the, brought out their, their stars, uh, final star rankings, and uh, – a lot of scuttlebutt about it you know uh folks are upset that this guy's a five star this guy's not this guy fell 20 spots i don't get caught up in that and and a lot of i see a lot of you guys out there getting really very emotional about it because i know it dictates dictates team clash rankings and where people slide in and out and, and look we have a week uh till signing day however joe burrow and, and Lamar Jackson were both in the 2015 class. Lamar Jackson was, I believe, from the composite, was like the 17th ranked dual threat quarterback. And I think Joe Burrow was somewhere in the low 20s. Uh, Lamar was a four, low four star and Joe Burrow was a three star. That's your NFL MVP and your college football Heisman winner as well as a national champion. Don't get caught up in the stars too much. 
Now, yes, I've heard, I've seen and heard Jeff Ketchum's uh, data analysis, and it's brilliant about five stars and the hit ratio to becoming first round picks versus four and three stars. I get all that. Um, and I'm not saying stars aren't important at all and we shouldn't pay attention to them. But when you show up on campus, no one cares about your fifth star. It's can you play or can you not? Look at all those freshman running backs that went to LSU last year. Um, it was Chris Curry and Ty Davis Price that were up there playing at the end of the season, not John Emery, who was almost a top 10 player. So it's about who can play when you get on there and, and how quickly you can get ramped up and, and develop over time. Yeah, those five stars aren't just for who can play right away, but it's also potential based. And we have to see that from a guy like a Tyler Owens who earned his fifth star from 24-7 but some of his peers were playing ahead of him. Now, he has that potential to move around, and we can use him in a bunch of different ways, and that's really, really cool. But no one cares about your fifth star when you come to campus. I just care if you can compete or not uh, and, and, and get up to speed. Marcus Tillman Jr. was our lowest-rated recruit last year, uh, but he came into the camp knocking heads off right off the bat. So um, don't get caught up in, in it too much. There's some and there's some players I'm going to go through here that we need to evaluate um, that are that are three stars that I'm excited about to, to potentially um, earn their business in, in, in our recruitment. So uh, starting off with the big name. Right. So I just talked about the stars. Well, Alfred Collins just earned his fifth star out of Bastrop and, uh, you know, rare combination of size and athleticism. I think they got him up to like 285 pounds. 6'5", and he's playing on the edge. Uh, he's, you know, the, we've talked about the basketball highlights on this channel and um, his ability to get after the quarterback and, and wreak havoc. I think this has the potential to be Tom Herman's version of Ed Oliver that he recruited to Houston. Uh, he's that level of player to me, maybe not a top 10 overall player, but has that type of potential when I look at his size and his athleticism and what he can do for us in the type of defense uh, that we will be deploying under Chris Ash. Um, I believe Mike Roach has him locked in to go to Texas, according to the crystal ball. You never know. Alabama's in the mix as well as OU. I think that's his top three, and including us. So uh, come February 5th, I do expect Alfred Collins to sign with Texas. Uh, his mother played uh, basketball for us in the 90s. Uh, they, they've remained within the Central Texas area. And uh, he's a guy who I think coupled with a Vernon Broughton and, and, and the rest of the crew, a Prince Dorba and all the, the wonderful defensive linemen we brought in, that's, uh, that's the type of recruiting that can, you know how I, how I tell you all the time about D-line, O-line, that's the quickest way to get yourself back into the playoff discussion for Texas to get ourselves into the playoff discussion, um, Alfred Collins is a must-have. All right, so the next guy we want to move on to is Enos Rakestraw Jr. out of Duncanville. Uh, we're fighting an uphill battle right now against Alabama for his services. And many of you may look at, it, again, stars and all that. Oh, he's the 800th player in the country, according to 24-7. Don't pay any attention to that. I, I went over the names a few weeks ago of the, of the brothers he locked up this year. He's DFW Defensive Player of the Year, uh, and he's a guy who's a real deal at corner uh, with the mentality to, to play man and, 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 and defend to the best of his abilities and, and has some physical tools that can be developed from a speed and quickness perspective. Um, a lot of y'all got on me in the comments when I made that video of, oh, Steve, we can't get all the, the hidden gems. And, um, you know, everybody else was sleeping on them. Bama offered late, so don't get on Texas for offering late. No. We should have offered after that game against Rakeem Jarrett when they played St. John's. Once he once he did that to Rakeem Jarrett, I'm sorry. that I saw enough. And, and here's the thing, guys. I'm not, I'm not saying Texas can un uncover every single stone in the state of Texas. It's very, very difficult. But when I'm talking about hidden gems... I'm, I'm saying you can't miss the hidden gems at Duncanville. That's a 6A program who's playing on a national perspective. 
I'm not talking about some random West Texas school in, in, in 3A, okay? That's a totally different discussion. I'm, I'm, I'm saying don't miss the brothers that are playing for Duncanville when you had, you were recruiting two kids off their team and maybe, um, and, and also you signed, actually three, because you got the tackle coming in 2021 as well. You were recruiting Thompson, who ended up going to Auburn. You got Jackson. So it's not like this isn't, you know, it's not like you weren't aware of this person or aware of of the school or they weren't going to camps or anything like that um, in regards to Enos, right? So um, he fills that outside corner on. That's why I'm frustrated because it's like we lost Joshua Eaton. We lost, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, his brother that was from Florida. Pouncey. Yeah. Thank you, Matthew. Pouncey. And so we lost we lost the Pouncey brothers. We lost Eaton. And it's tough. So I, now, credit to Jay Valai and, and, and Chris Ash for ramping up and trying to build that relationship. They were able to secure an official visit to Texas, I believe, January 31st. So um, hopefully we can, we can really gain some ground with that visit and, and continue to build those relationships um, up there in, in the DFW area and, and, and get this brother in because – we need him, at least him and, and Keaton Crawford in this class can sure up some of that need there um, for, for, this, for, this, for this age group, right? So um, another one of these, 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 these guys that's, that's on the cusp, Kelvante Dixon, uh, brother of Keontae Ingram. I do think he will end up signing with Texas. Um, the sibling thing is, has been strong, and I've seen a lot of siblings, even uh, the brothers at Florida, uh, Henderson, his brother ended up signing with Florida after a crazy recruitment. He ended up there. I think Kelvante Dixon, I know at one point he was um, with Arkansas, but I think uh, just with the momentum we have and, and, his, and the relationship of his, of his brother, the need at wide receiver, especially in an interior wide receiver position, uh, he can come in and help us there. So more of a long-term prospect because of his weight, he, you know. But at the same token, he's a big play guy. Um, and I like the fact that he has run after catchability as well as tracking the football well and catching over his shoulder. You saw all that on display in the, in the state championship game for Carthage. And he, and he blew it up, right? Three-plus touchdowns and uh, an incredible performance for Kelvante Dixon. I, so I think right now, I think we get Alfred Collins, and I do think we end up with Kelvante Dixon. Uh, and this is going to be an uphill battle, and, and that's on Texas, in my opinion, and I, there's nothing you can say to change that. Uh, Princely, still out there uh, from Maynard, D tackle DN. Um, I think that one's going to be either Florida or OU at this point. Um, I know Baylor's still hanging around, but with Frank Oakham gone to the NFL, Matt Rule gone to the NFL, uh, I don't know how Baylor hangs in there with that. Uh, and, and with our D-line class, especially if we get Alfred Collins and, you know, the Soren Goyer Welsh thing, I don't know. I would love to have Princely. Don't get it twisted. But from a spot perspective, uh, I don't know how that's going to work out. And I don't know how much ground Texas can make up after his decommitment uh, at the end of last year. And, and so that, that kind of wraps it up I, for recruiting. I, I do think we end up with Alfred Collins and Kambate Dixon on signing day. Uh, but I, if, if we get Anus, that that's a, you know, again, he's going to look low when you, if, for the people that only, that are star snobs. Uh, but for those of us who watch tape and evaluate on our own um, and really look at these kids and, you know, have our own individual impressions of them, you'll be very, very impressed if we end up with him. Uh, like I said before, he reminds me of Levi Wallace from Bama. There's a reason why Bama's going after him so hard. Um, so we'll see how that plays out. I do want to end off the video just by, with two things. Uh, Tom Herman, I want to say after we weren't able to get the second defensive line coach position filled, keeping Brian Carrington out on the road, as the 10th coach was a brilliant move. And I'm hearing a lot of good things paying off, not just for 2020, but also for 2021. Continue to build the relationships on the road. Brian Carrington, Road Warrior of the Week. He's, he's a yeoman's effort. And, um, you know, th this brother's been uh, underrated, in my opinion, with, with how much he's done 
uh, from a player personnel perspective and in, in our culture. Uh, he, you know, we talk about Matthew McConaughey, the minister of culture. Brian Carrington is doing it inside of the building and on the road representing the University of Texas. And we're hearing a lot of good things about Chris Ash on the road, about Jay Valai. Uh, Andre Coleman has been another one whose name I keep hearing uh, relationship wise is winning over some coaches, winning over parents um, and people that, you know, we weren't necessarily in the discussion about before. So uh, we recently just offered uh, Doug, Doug Nussmeyer's son, Garrett Nussmeyer, uh, out of Marcus, which is in Flower Mound. Uh, for for 2021, I know a lot of people were like, "Hey, well, we have Jalen Milrow and Mike Yersage. What are you doing? Are you taking two quarterbacks? Or what's going on?" Um, but hey, you know, he's these are some talented players and guys he wants to evaluate. I have no problem adding to the room. Absolutely no problem at all, especially with the way the transfer portal works these days. If you lose the battle, you're going to go to the transfer portal anyway, regardless of where you go. Uh, so it's going to be an evolving door around uh, the quarterback room and college football period so you might as well try to bring in everybody you can to to compete and, and may the best man win the job um so but anyway i just want to give a shout out to brian carrington i'm really appreciative of his efforts uh just to to, to finish off the video a couple things around the big 12 demarco murray is now the running back coach at oklahoma <laughs> Mappy, <laughs> Mappy just did the gun to his head come on man uh, replacing Jay Bulware, who we took and, and now named our tight end coach as well as associate special teams head coach. Um, so, you know, many of y'all know the, the legacy of DeMarco Murray, former Oklahoma great, former Cowboy great. Uh, now he is he's doing his thing in college football, and that's a big name to walk into any kid's living room. So just off of presence alone, I have no idea how he is as a football coach. I, I haven't done a whole lot of homework on but so we'll see um what they'll be able to do uh with lincoln riley there but that's a that's a big name and, and somebody who is very very meaningful up there in norman oklahoma to those folks and the other one that, that i thought was interesting two other ones dave aranda hiring uh larry fedora as his offensive coordinator at baylor very very interesting move as many of y'all know larry fedora was here last year uh with his son serving in an analyst role position so i'm curious to see how the offensive staff comes together at Baylor. If his son, I believe his son Dylan Fedora, if I'm not mistaken, if he become gets a role there, I um, mean how that shakes out. I don't expect Baylor to be contenders necessarily next season, but I do like what David Rand is doing with his coaching staff. Um, and I saw on Twitter he went to City Market in Luling to get some barbecue, which is uh, very near and dear to my heart. And um, where my mother used to go to get barbecue as a kid and, and somewhere our family consistently goes to get barbecue. So as, I don't know if any, I've ever said this, but my family is from Lockhart, Texas and um, Lockhart Barbecue Capital of the World. But we always went to City Market in Luling. So shout out to City Market if y'all have ever been there or heard of it. Anyway, I saw Dave Aranda there posting about it. And so I'm like, whoa, what's going on here? Anyway, uh, and then the last thing, Todd Orlando, uh, going to USC after a 10-day stint. Was it 10 days at Texas Tech, Matthew? Something like that. So uh, Orlando's on the move again, going to USC to, to try to salvage whatever he can with Graham Harrell and uh, Clay Helton. We'll see what's going on. I They're still losing recruits over there. They had another guy sign with Clemson uh, for the 2021 class out of LA. I mean, I Somebody let me know what the hell's going on at USC and why they can't recruit all of a sudden, especially with all these folks. It's not, I mean, it's not like they were that terrible last year. So to not be able to get any of these kids and the moves that Oregon's been making, UNLV has gone into the portal and started signing a whole bunch of people. Um, they got a coach from Oregon, Arizona State. I talked about Herm Edwards and the moves he's making. So some interesting things going on on the West Coast. But Todd Orlando's over there now, so best of luck to him moving forward. I'll, I'll always be a Todd Orlando fan uh, as a person. So, guys, that's all I got for you all today. Um, make sure you hit up the links and follow. I think we're like 10 people away from going over 1,000 folks on Instagram, which is awesome. Uh, Twitter's blowing up as well and, and you know, constantly communicating with you guys on all these platforms. And, uh, again, shout-out to Boss's Ranch on their one-year anniversary on the shelves at HEB. Matthew, thank you as always. Guys. Horns always up.